and welcome to season one of the official P&O Cruises podcast, Heart to Heart with me, Amy Hart. I am so excited to be hosting this podcast. Some of you may know that I used to be cabin crew and my favourite thing was meeting new people, learning about their lives, asking them questions. So hosting this is an absolute dream come true. Across the series, we'll be meeting some well-known faces and we'll definitely learn a lot more about them. So what are we waiting for? Let's go and meet them. Today I'm at the Savoy Hotel having afternoon tea because tonight I'm popping next door to the Savoy Theatre to see Sunset Boulevard starring the one and only Nicole Scherzinger. Now if this isn't a pinch me moment, I don't know what is. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you so much for being here. I am such a massive fan. This is such a pinch me moment. Um, grew up listening to all your music. I was having like a little nostalgic listen in the car this morning. Oh, and it took yes. me right back. I used to be a cheerleader when I was like 16. And it was around the time of like all the Pussycat Dolls yes. songs. And I can still remember all the routines, it turns out, to like when I grow up. Yep. And the one with Missy Elliott. <laughs> iconic, iconic songs. Oh, um, but obviously we're here in the Savoy because you're currently playing Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard. But we will talk about that later. I want to start with a little quick fire round. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that you are as much of a massive musical nerd as I am. So it's musical theatre themed. I didn't know that you were a musical oh my, nerd. It's my whole life. Ah! Like, literally, my favourite musical is From Here to Eternity. Who's ever heard of that? Like, like, literally. I haven't. Exactly. <laughs> <as well>. exactly. <laughs> it's so, amazing. Lame is or Phantom? I mean, Andrew Lloyd. I am yes. doing Andrew Lloyd Webber's show right now, so I'll say Phantom. And we do love your iconic full Phantoms performance. It is. Oh, thank you. Iconic. I mean, I do love a lame is. Yes. I saw the concert. I loved the concert more. A lot less running around. You know, a little known <laughs> fact. Tell me. On my own, that song. Yeah. Trevor Nunn, my director for Cats, who wrote the lyrics for Memory, wrote the lyrics for On My Own as well. I literally did not know that, so thank you for that. That is my new dinner party. Not many people know that. It's a little nugget. Thank you for that. We're literally two minutes in and we've already got <laughs> exclusives. Um, anything goes or kiss me, Kate. Anything goes. Can you tap? Could you be Reno? I feel like you'd be I, I, iconic Reno. I think I was in Anything Goes. <laughs> That's why I'm tapping. Yeah. I was in the ensemble tapping. Yes. Well, With I a see you Reno. Make it happen, please. Uh, Miss Saigon or Fiddle on the Roof? Babe, Miss Saigon. Look at me. I'm Hawaiian, Ukrainian, Filipina. How am I not going to love Miss Saigon? I wanted to be Liz along my whole life. Have you seen Old Friends? No. With her in it. You need to pop down to the uh, Gilgood Theatre. We saw it the other night. Wait, she, she's here. She's here. Oh, my gosh. Leah Salonga is here, and she's doing Old Friends. You need to go and see it. It is amazing. Wow. Um, a song through musical or scenes and music? I, I like both. Like I it? mean, what would you consider Hamilton right now? Is that? That's oh. both. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because it's almost, it's the rapping. Yeah. So it's almost like, it's kind of both. Yeah. See, I'm a bit more Rodgers and Hammerstein than Hamilton. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In the interval, Hamilton, I was like, I don't really know what's going on. I had to get Wikipedia out and read it. Babe, no one does. You have to go back like <laughs> yeah. five times. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Would you rather see, not be in, would you rather see a matinee or an evening? I've seen both, but I think an evening. I love yeah. to make a night out of it. I, I, you know what my trick is? I come in, no drinks, anything before. And then at the intermission, I treat myself yeah. to a little bit of wine. And then the second hat, second act just it blossoms that much exactly. more. Exactly. <laughs> any show, any show gets better after a while. <laughs> um, what is your favorite musical of all time? My favorite musical of all time. Right now, I'll have to say Sunset so, Boulevard. Thank you. Tickets are available. <laughs> um, what is your dream role? Well, I'll have to say... This is the dream role I didn't know that was my dream role. Yes, I had so no, I do, I, no yeah. idea Jamie Lloyd had this vision. I've always loved, you know, Miss Saigon, obviously, growing up yeah. as a young Filipino girl. And um, I've always been interested in playing Aurora in Kiss of the Spider Woman. Yes, um, Chita Rivera. But there's, there's many roles. Uh, I, my dream, actually, is to create my own musical. Yes, I saw that the yeah. other day. So we've got, I've got a little question there about later. What is your no skip album? What's an, a musical theatre soundtrack that you can put on from the start and <gasps> not skip till the end? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, other than Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> which I'm going to hammer <laughs> home. Um, I think Dear Evan Hansen's pretty good right yes. now. I love you know, Pasek and Paul are genius. Yes. Um, you know, they did obviously The Greatest Showman oh, yeah. and they have all those iconic songs and I got to sing um, Never Enough for the BBC 
um, during the pandemic. So yeah, yeah, amazing. Thank you. So let's go way back. Um, obviously, you studied musical theatre. I think growing up, obviously, we always saw you as a pop star. But I love that you're becoming this music. Well, no, you are a musical theatre icon. Oh. Um, and you studied musical theatre. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to study musical theatre? Well, I think from a young age, I was six years old when I discovered the voice, incredible voice of Whitney Houston. And that changed my life. And I was like, I want to be a singer. And then I didn't really, we came from very humble beginnings, my family. So they couldn't afford to put me in any classes or, or give me any yeah. sessions or, or anything. So um, I found a youth performing arts school, um, high school. So I kind of planned it out as, as a, at a young age that I would go to that yeah. performing arts school. And then I kind of found my tribe. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I just knew that I loved to express myself through music and um, through song and dance. Yeah. And that's it kind of found me, I guess. Yeah. Right. I think it, it does. So. So aside from Whitney Houston, have you got any other like big musical inspirations, people that you take like little bits from that you think, like, I love that about you. I love that about you. I mean, everyone. I mean, Whitney was like made my my soul and my heart sing. I felt like she has the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Like when she sings, it's so powerful. Yes. Like, right. Unprecedented voice. Her million dollar bill album is actually a no skip for me. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was my first ever no skip album. So there's Whitney. But then growing up, I mean, I've listened. I'm so influenced by so many people, mm -hmm. everyone from. Sinead O'Connor to Alanis Morissette to Billie Holiday to Ella Fitzgerald like I have a, a very eclectic background of music and um yeah um yeah. Leontine Price as an opera singer I, did, I, I found her by myself in the yeah. library in elementary <laughs> school who does that you just like she's brilliant opera singer um yeah many influences so obviously you joined the Pussycat Dolls mm -hmm. in your 20s. You traveled all over the world. Like where were the best places that you traveled with them? God, we traveled so many places. It was like a blur. It was the wildest roller coaster. I remember we were on tour at the same time with Eminem and they were like, your schedule is way crazier than Eminem's schedule. <laughs> and it was at Eminem's prime as well. I mean, yeah. it was just to give you an idea how yeah. crazy it was. We got to go to cool places. Like, I think we went into like Niagara Falls. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Just random. Yeah. We, we performed in front of the pyramids. Wow. We've been at so many different places. Yeah. When, when you're traveling for work, are you a sort of in the hotel until the very last minute that you have to leave, go to work and then go back? Or do you like to sort of go out, get into the culture, like see different things and see what that place has to offer? I'm a bit of an introvert. Mm. I'm a bit of a perfectionist too. So when it comes to work, I'm, yeah. I'm very uh, tunnel vision yeah. and it's all about the work until the work is done and I'm satisfied with it and then I can breathe a little bit. So I, I would love to see the culture more if I had more days, but yeah. you know, when you're on tour yeah. and stuff, you don't, you don't get to, but like, for example, I've been here nine weeks and I've literally just like eat breathe yeah. and sleep the theater yeah you said yeah. I love to see the sun <laughs> see, I, I was like <laughs> I couldn't believe I've seen the sun I mean if I want to treat myself I'll go for a walk in the park yeah. if I have that but otherwise I'm just kind of always thinking about work and yeah. what's next but now that we've had our opening yes. I can enjoy it more yeah. I think not in rehearsals all day in a dark yes. theater yeah because people don't realize we're rehearsing for six days a week and then with our previews, which were several weeks, you rehearse all day and then you yeah. do your shows at yeah. night. And you've got tech rehearsals, which are mm -hmm. so long. Yeah. <laughs> like 10 minutes of the show takes about three days. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like, oh, really? You know. So long. You know exactly so how it is. So when you're not at work, where do you love to travel to? I love Europe. I love Italy because I love food. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to eat. Um, I think Italy is just so romantic. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, my fiancé's family lives in Portugal. Actually, so. when I put on my Instagram last night, very excitedly, tomorrow I get to meet with Nicole Scherzinger. Um, so many people messaged me saying, I met her in the Algarve and she was so yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, so his family's from the Algarve and I've just fallen in love with Portugal. I didn't know Portugal before. Yes. Beautiful. And I just love it there. The caves, the water, the people, mm -hmm. the food. Where are your top spots in Portugal? 
that you like to go to, like restaurants? Oh, yes. My favorite restaurant is called Dos Pasos. Okay. People who know, know. <laughs> Do you know? Yes. <laughs> Dos Pasos is the best. And then our friends have Maria's as well on the yes. beach. These are all on the beach and they all have lots of seafood and that's just me. Like I'm literally a walking scam. I'm a garlic and butter sc- sh- sh- tiger shrimp when I'm there. <laughs> That's all I am, and a glass of wine, and I'm so yeah. happy. And the sun sets and the sun rises. I'm just so happy. And then I, I miss home as well. I miss yeah. back home in Hawaii. Yes. Oh, I really want to go to Hawaii so much. We're just talking about our honeymoon, but um, it's a bit far because we can only go for a week because I have to leave the baby at home. Oh, so yeah. So we'll take him One with us day. next time. Yes. 25th wedding anniversary One day vibes. when you're over there yeah. <laughs> for work. Yes. Yes. And you got to do Australia and all that. Yes, I'll do that. You're so Especially in demand. The, I'll do the world like, cruise. Exactly. I'll do the world cruise. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, um, you had any like pinch me moments in your career? Like your career has been so varied and so like amazing. I would say for most people, everything that you've done is like a pinch me moment. But is there one in particular that makes you go, I can't believe I did that? I wish I had like my best friends and family to tell my story better. I'm so used to living in it. Yeah that I think I've had so many amazing pinch me moments in my life, but I it goes by so fast and I'm always thinking about how I can get, yeah. you know. What's next? What's next and how could I be better and what could I do? But I will tell you a pinch me moment, I believe I'm living it right now Yes. with Sunset. I would never imagine this role for myself. It's changed my life. It's changed my life with how people view me as well. And... Um, Last week, the opening was pretty crazy. Yes. I had three standing ovations mid-show. <laughs> I, I, I'm Maybe. I mean, I'm kind of like in character, but... Um, or four. I'm just... I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'll do four tonight. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> just you. Like just is. randomly, whenever you walk on. She's got me. <laughs> I know her. Um, but yeah, so I think that was a pinch me moment, I think, just to... Uh, to I'm really taken out of my comfort zone doing this. I've never done anything so exposing in my yes. life and so um, brave and honest yeah. and real and raw. So it means a lot when it's 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 been so well received. It, yeah. It's like your heart is like, oh, thank God everything is like, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And like Norma Desmond says, I'm back where I was born to be, yes. which is on that stage. And I think those of us that have seen you perform before in Cats as Grizabella, like we know that you are like insanely talented and you are just amazing. I think you've really cemented yourself as like a star of the West End with this because it, it, I think because it's so different as well. Mm. It would have been so easy to just go and do like a copy of Patty or Glenn or so. And you've like made from what I've heard, kind of weird to say tonight. Yeah, um, yeah. You've like really made it your own. Well, I have Jamie Lloyd to thank for that. And Andrew has been amazing. He's writing new music still for the show because it's such a different production, such a modern contemporary production. Um, But it's a completely different take on it. And um, yeah, I think people, hopefully people can just relate to it. It's a very human experience. It's very stripped back, but it's just all about a human experience and you're going to eat it up. I literally cannot wait. Um, So let's talk about Avia. So you've recently worked with P&O Cruises. You're the godmother of Avia, which is a very special ship to me because it's where I got engaged. Um, In the theatre. Yes. Oh um, my god! In the theatre. I was actually doing all the photo shoots for the podcast and my boyfriend walked out and uh, surprised me on stage, Aww. had no shoes on, had a drink in my hand. That sounds like, like me on stage yeah. for <laughs> Sunset Boulevard luckily, without the drink. I say, luckily no blood anywhere. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow. Um, so the naming ceremony in Barbados, how was that? I love, we had to watch it at home because we had a one week old baby, but, <laughs> but I mean, he loved it. But um, You're going to come, have you been there yet on the on the cruise no we're going in t- in 24 days oh babe it's amazing you know i'd never been to barbados so pino cruises brought me to barbados mm-hmm. and i fell in love with it it was amazing yeah. you know i'm quite snobby with water i'm from hawaii <laughs> yeah. right where an, I, i'm an island girl and i just loved the energy there i loved the people there yeah it was um the naming ceremony was spectacular they did yeah. a brilliant job 
We love the bottle of rum on the zip wire when it's smashed. That was like, literally our favourite bit. Oh, <laughs> and also you singing. Oh, that poor rum. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Could have drunk all of that. <laughs> but I love Barbados as well. I used to be an air hostess. Um, so I used to go to Barbados like every week. So I cannot wait to take Sam oh, wow. for a fish burger at Cuz's Fish Burger Shack, just yes. by the Hilton. My absolute favourite. Now you are putting together a show called Shh. Yes. For Avia and Iona. Yes. Um, tell us about that. What's the inspiration behind it? Tell me about it. I mean, I was really, is is this the word now in, in that they, all the young kids are using gassed? Yes. It's very gassed. <laughs> when P&O Cruises asked me to creative direct and to do the show because as a creative, I'm yeah. like, oh my God, I get to have so much fun. So I was like, if I'm going to do a show, I want something that's going to make an impact, something yeah. that people are going to remember, something that's going to transform people, yeah. something that's going to be a magical night to always remember. So I just kind of drew from my own personal experiences. It's an experience. I don't want to give away too much. It's called shh yeah. because it's just about tapping into that thing within you that you know that you already have, that it's just, it's just finding it again it's it's magical, it's mysterious, but it's also very empowering. Yeah. So it's kind of built around this story of this goddess named Hina. Amazing. Um, and she's it, she's like entering these different worlds, these different lands, whether it's sun, moon, space. It's, we're incorporating all the elements of the air and water and uh, really powerful music, inspiring music, anthemic music, um, but just stuff that's going to get you just feeling empo em empowered yeah. and then empowered to party. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so just like really freeing and releasing. So then by the end of the show, you, I don't know, it's, I think it's important for me when it's a responsibility as an artist when you do a show that you leave something with the person. Yeah whether it's an entertainment or they made them feel like, wow, I've uh, made them think about something different in their lives or within themselves. And yeah. I want that show to have that impact like that. So I'm excited about it. I've been working closely with Adrian Gass, speaking of being Gass. <laughs> and um, yeah, we've been working on it for a very long time, yeah. all the intricate details. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's going to yeah. be... Like nothing we've ever seen before. Nothing you've ever seen before. It's entertainment, but it's also going to be powerful. Yes. And it's like a bit of story and song and all yeah. different. There's aerial work and then there's water work and then there's just like drums because I love drums. That just things that are going to stir your soul. And then great music, a great playlist. You can't have yeah. a great party. Exactly. A memorable night without epic music. And I've made my own drink as well. I'm really excited about it. Amazing. What's in the drink? It's a spicy margarita. Amazing. A little bit of passion fruit. A little bit of Aperol spritz. Oh, my boyfriend loves an Aperol spritz. He'll be straight. And a margarita. Those are his two favorite. You've literally made him. And he doesn't realize how much he loves passion fruit too now. And it's all yeah. in one. Um, so I'm excited about that. It's my new favorite drink. I'm obsessed with it. And I'm so happy Piano Cruz has got on board with it. They're like, she's crazy. Our mouths are on fire. <laughs> but let's go with it. Let's go with it. <laughs> So you have one of them just before and then a couple after. What a great night. Yes. What a great night. Throughout. Throughout the three hours of the show. Three hours? Yes. Amazing. Once a week, three hours. It's awesome. I literally can't wait to see it. I'm going to make sure I'm on that launch trip. Yes. <laughs> I'll make we'll be sure there together, the cheersing. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I'll be trying, the, we'll be trying the drink. Stanley will be watching the aerial. That's my little boy. He'll be watching the aerial yeah. stuff. And basically, when we go on the cruise, he doesn't get an option of going in the night nursery. He's coming to all the shows. And he came to see Greatest Days actually on the uh, on oh, our on our VR. Yes. And uh, when they he have was... Greatest Days on our VR now, yeah, oh. it's a great show. Um, I listened to a podcast this morning that you did in 2016 um, wow. with Michelle Visage and RuPaul. Loved it. Wow, it's great. It's on no idea what I would have um, said. <laughs> um, you talked about how much you love Fosse. Is there any Fosse inspired dance moves in there? Um, in this show, yeah. not yet, but we could. Yes. I mean, Adrian's a brilliant choreographer. I'm wanting to keep it super um, artistic, um, but also contemporary and modern and very powerful. I always like to say with whatever dances that we do, it comes from a place of power. Yes. Um, especially with females when they mm -hmm. dance too. Any of my dancers, if you've ever seen any of my shows, were like, uh, my solo shows were mm -hmm. like, we're like warriors. Yeah. 
up there, you know. Um, so that would be really cool. I mean, love Fosse. Yes. Genius. That would be cool. Thank yeah. you for that. Yes. Reminding me about that. What is it about Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals that make you keep coming back? It's the music. It's the score. Um, uh, first of all, I'm so blessed to have Andrew as a friend of mine, mm -hmm. you know, who, who before Jamie saw me in this role, Andrew saw me singing... Um, Phantom of the Opera for him, saw me singing Evita for him in his anniversary yeah. shows. But his music, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's kind of like the soundtrack sometimes. For me, I feel like his music is so sweeping and so massive and so iconic. It's like the soundtrack to my soul. Every night when I, Jamie makes me sit, I'm sitting on stage mm. before this show yeah. starts. And then people don't realize that I'm sitting in the dark. Yeah. You don't see me, but I'm always in the dark. And the music just takes me somewhere else. The score, it's, yeah. just, it's just genius. It's, it's beautiful. It's powerful. Now, you said this is your role of a lifetime. Um, mm. why, what is it about this role that makes it that? I think because I can relate to Norma mm -hmm. and in so many ways. So it's really nice when you ever go through life experiences, pain, struggle. It's really awesome that you could turn it into art and yeah. to something purposeful. And I'm able to do that. I mean, it's like, how lucky am I? I've had many of the same, uh, I feel like, struggles that Norma has. And um, some of, uh, like we all do in human experiences of battling loneliness, emptiness, vulnerability, being fearful of, you know, having to deal with ageism in the industry. You know, you talked about that. We've all gone through it. And to just be able to turn it into something really positive and beautiful and I think with this show, I've never had the opportunity to do something so really stripped back. Like there are no smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You know, there's one outfit. Yeah. There's like barely any makeup. I'm barefoot. I don't get to wear any jewelry. <laughs> like there's no set. You're like, yeah, I'll sign up for Sunset Boulevard, Norma Desmond, or the diamonds. Oh, okay. Norma Desmond's <laughs> in my mind, as yeah. Jamie <laughs> Lloyd would say. You know, so I've never done anything, as I'd mentioned before earlier, so kind of very brave and bold and unapologetic yeah um and just really honest and real and raw like I'm not afraid to show my ugly yeah I'm not afraid to show my all the beautiful parts and all the ugly parts and and all the insecure parts inside and it's really been quite cathartic on stage and that's why I said it's such so gratifying and I'm so grateful that people have received it so well and, yeah. and not run the opposite way, you know, yeah. because it's quite a bold um, reimagination and reinvention of the, the entire mean, production and, and story. What I've seen a lot is when people come out, because my Twitter is a bit of a musical theatre echo chamber. So uh -huh. people um, put on that they're there to see it, then post afterwards saying how amazing it was and how amazing you are. And then the next morning they tweet again saying, still thinking about Sunset Boulevard. Oh, I can't get over it. I can't stop thinking great. about it. So, so that's what we want to do is we want to stir people up. You want to change people. Yeah. You know, make the theater, um, you know. Yeah. Make you think you. about things. Exactly. Yeah. And like sort of see, see parts of yourself on stage. Exactly. Yeah. See parts of yourself. Jamie always says, and we've taken musical theater and turned it into an art installation. So <laughs> it's, a, you know, obviously open to interpretation yeah. up there. Now, Part of my musical theatre, like, nerdness. Mm. I love logistics. I love details. Do you have a pre- and post-show ritual? I always pray. I'm, I'm a mama's girl. I grew up, my grandfather is a bishop. I grew up in the church. So my faith is a big part of who I am. And a lot of people don't realize, but not only do I pray, but I do the sign of the cross, like, 80 times throughout the show. So I'll do it. When I enter, when I go off, when I enter, when I go off. So I didn't realize that till the other t yeah. day that I was like, I wonder if people in the back in the wings think I'm crazy because i constantly doing it, just blessing myself and surrounding myself with angels. Yeah. Um, I hold, we hold hands together as a cast and we do a prayer or we do a mantra or we do a meditation and we breathe together yeah. as a cast before and then after, I drink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't because I've got to save my voice. Yeah. Um, afterwards, um, 
when I'm in the shower, <laughs> washing all the blood off. <laughs> um, I'm just, I just am in gratitude. That's all. And I'm also exhausted because <laughs> the role takes a lot out of you. Do you eat when you get home? I always eat. I'm usually having soup. I know that's yeah. boring. Um, sometimes pasta. But yeah. I, yeah, I'm mm. always, I always eat after. Yes. I can't really eat before. No. Don't it sitting. Yeah. Sitting there. You know what I do do is sometimes uh, before the show, though, I eat chocolate. Oh, nice. It kind of comes from my mm. throat. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Talking of food, I have a question to ask you. So... You love a British roast dinner, don't you? I love it. As do I. I think we might be secret best friends. I don't know. Um, and I think like, we are. If I don't have with one that on, luxurious yeah. hair, that, the it's all ocean my own. of hair that it's you all have, my own. the musical theater, <laughs> and loving a roast. Yeah. Well, I'm about to blow your mind as well. So, if I don't have one on a Sunday, I have to have one on a Monday. I have to go and go to the Toby Carvery. Wait, so. you can have a you can have a roast on a Monday. You, ca- I'm not sure the Toby. I mean, I'd love to take you to the Toby Carvery. But I don't think I don't think it's for you. What's that? You have, you have to queue up. You queue up with your <laughs> plate, and they cut the meat for you. What is it? A, a Toby? A to- Toby Carvery. Toby Carvery. Yeah, and then you help yourself to all your vegetables, but oh. it's all day, every day. What? Yep. Oh my god, Mid-day I've got to try it. Till ten o'clock. Yeah. All I ask is for extra gravy. Yeah. Well, you do it yourself out of a pot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is it like a cafeteria? Um. I sort of. I would take my yeah. grandparents to the cafeteria. <laughs> it kind of sounds like that. No? I think I think this is a uh, Netflix show in itself. Um, <laughs> but I am I'd also obsessed with Thanksgiving. Yes, and that's why I love roast because it yeah. makes me think yeah. of family and Thanksgiving. Basically, during lockdown, I read loads of American autobiographies in the November lockdown, and they all talked about Thanksgiving. So I was like, well, we're not doing anything next Thursday. Family, I'm cooking Thanksgiving. So I did it for... Six of us the first year, 20 of us the next year. And then last year I was pregnant, so I could only manage eight. Because it's, it's two days of prep. Yeah. But what are you doing for Thanksgiving now that you're in London for it this time? Wow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have two shows. Oh. Because Thanksgiving always falls on a Thursday. Thursday. I have two shows. Normally we would cook. Um, we're kind of weird in America. We do the same meal for Thanksgiving as Christmas. But we love it and yeah. we don't care. And it's a family tradition. We have all of our family favorites, the casseroles, the everything. Um, I probably, we won't have time to cook. So I'll have to find somewhere that we could have a beautiful Thanksgiving yeah. meal. Um, maybe the Savoy. I don't, I don't, yeah. somebody who will maybe have one for us because I think I'll be tired because I'll have yeah. the two shows, but I won't miss in, a Thanksgiving. A Thanksgiving dinner in between shows. <laughs> You could yes, do a exactly. potluck. At, you, um, you, you know, the I'm I'm really grateful because my cousin lives here, yeah. and she actually hosts a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner. So maybe I'll go over to hers after the yes. second show. Nice. Shout out to my cousin Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> so my penultimate question, because I've got a, a funny one, but um, what would you like your legacy to be? My legacy to be not that I'm trying to write you off early or anything, but in the future. No, that's a great question. That's a big question. Um, God, that's huge. Well, that's funny because that's why I want to write this musical. Yeah. And I actually call it my legacy building project because it's it's loosely based on my life, but it's more about the human story, yeah. the human experience, the struggles that we all go to, and there's purpose in the pain, right? Seeing the beauty in it yeah. from the ashes. So I want to build that, and that will be part of my legacy when yeah. I build that show but I don't know. I think my legacy, I think hopefully some, I want to leave maybe, I think that God has given me the gift of um, music and being able to hopefully communicate, storytell through song and even heal through song. So I think that's part of my legacy yeah. to do that. I'm a very compassionate person. Yeah. I'm a cancer. I'm very empathetic. Me too. So I want to do leave the world in a better place. Yeah. Just give back and heal, heal the world in some way, whether it's through my music, my voice, my heart, mm-hmm. my works that I give back. And then in, in turn, maybe that'll help to heal myself yeah. as well. I'm a Cancerian as well. And I feel everything here. Babe. Like everything. Keeps me up at night. <laughs> same. Same. My little boy. I sometimes, I'm, I'm like... What happens if he gets bullied at school when he's older? And it'll literally keep me up all night. I feel really sad about it. Auntie Nicole will step in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, yo, little kid, what's up? It's about to go down. Where's your parents? Auntie Nicole will be right I there. I get so protective of my nieces. Woo. 
I literally I picked my um, my nephew up from school the other day, and one of his friends said, "Bye, Warwick." I was like, "Who's that?" And he's like, it's yeah. "My best friend." I was like, oh, "Okay," because I was about to go over. <laughs> Thank I don't you for tolerate telling. bullying. Thank you for letting me know. Either that or the bullies. I will be like, yeah. come here. I'm going to hug you until you cry it out. <laughs> <laughs> smother you in love. Yes, exactly. Kill That's the, what we got to do. Kill the kindness. That's smother why you're still on the plane. World, smother this world in love. So before I go, I have one last question. And this is your dream fantasy holiday. So there are no oh. restrictions. Um, it doesn't have to be plausible. So oh. where are you going? Oh, my God. Gosh, that's crazy, that question. Okay, the first thing I thought of was like somewhere in Polynesia, like mm -hmm. Tahiti or something, yes. somewhere by, by Hawaii where I'm from in the Polynesian islands where the water is just crystal clear and the people are just so beautiful and the fruit is so fresh and then the sun is just kissing you, yes. gently kissing you. <laughs> but then I want an Italian server to come up with a really nice wine. <laughs> We'll, we'll get then one some pasta. Hold, hold that thought. Who are you taking with you? My family. Yes. Um, my family um, is my everything. What are you going to do while you're there? I'm going to just be kissed by the sun. I'm going to just float staring at the sky as I'm just submerged in water with my <laughs> arms wide out. And then I'm going to have my Piano Cruises spicy margarita, <laughs> passion, passion fruit margarita. And your favorite restaurant have said they'll fly in a team to cook whatever you want. What are you eating? Ooh. I'm quite picky. Well, I want the best oysters. Right. I love oysters. I want some balik salmon. I want some white truffle, fresh white truffle pasta, and then the best um, fish and seafood from the sea. Is that, is that too much else for you? No, I think that's all right. It's, it's, it's fun to see Holly, but fine. Uh, your favourite entertainer or band is available to perform. It can be anyone dead or alive. Who is it and what song do they open with? Oh, my gosh. How cool would it be to have Bob Marley and the yes. Whalers, right? And what Just would he casually? open with? Don't worry. Uh, about a thing. Mm, hey. Because every little thing. It's gonna be all right. Right? Amazing. How great is that? Nicole Shazza, you just sang to me. <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank it you, has been Angel. Amazing. Aww. Amazing. You have the best light about you. You oh. brought the sun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite part was. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell so you never miss anything. And of course, give it a like if you did. 